Um, so today's video is going to be my coming out of the broom closet. Now, I just did this entire video, and then I realized I said my actual name, like, quite a few times. I don't like to do that on the internet. <laughs> so, gotta redo it all, and watch myself. So, I'm just gonna go with the, I'm just gonna start where everybody else should start, the beginning. So, the first time I saw anything witchy, really, was when I was at my Aunt Carol's house, and my mom was doing some tarot readings. Now, I didn't know what those were. I didn't know what tarot cards were. I'd never seen my mom pull them out, so that was strange to me. But she had her own deck, and I never knew. So, she... Pulled those out, she was doing tarot readings with her friends, and I go up and I'm like, what are those? What's she doing? She tells me, her friend tells me that they're tarot cards, and she tells me to pick a few cards. So I pick a few cards, and apparently they were very, very good cards. So I asked my mom, I was 10 at the time, I asked my mom, can you take me to the bookstore so I can get my own tarot deck? She said yes, we went, I got this book saw this book called Elemental Witch. I loved how it told me that magic was real. I was happy with that. Like, I was at that age where everybody says, everything's fake, everything your parents ever told you is a lie. Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Tooth Fairy, everything is a lie. Magic doesn't exist. It's fake. I was at that age. I was so happy that this book told me otherwise. And it was written by an adult. I was happy that it told me that magic was real and that I could actually work with the elements and work with earth and everything around me. I was so happy with that. I loved it. So two years later, I had been doing witchcraft and everything for two years because... I'm a fast-paced person, and so I had already started doing that about two weeks after I got the book and read it. So, I had been doing random spells that I found on the internet and that I researched for about two years, and when I turned 12, I asked to go to the bookstore again, because I wanted to see if they had any actual spell books, so I wouldn't have to keep going onto the internet and finding things I didn't understand or didn't know about, and I would have to research and make sure all of this was okay. So, I went to the bookstore, and I found a book called The Wiccan Year. I asked my mom, hey mom, can I uh, get this book? She said, she gave me a look and said, sure, but I don't want you practicing any witchcraft. Like, I don't want you doing any spells that you don't understand. And I'm like, okay. I had already been looking everything up, so. Yeah. So when I turned 15, though, after I had read that book and the other one a few times more, I loved them. And I have, I still have that tarot deck that I got when I was 10. I carry that around with me everywhere. It's in my purse right now. So, I went and got that book. I read it a few times. When I turned 15, I already knew that I wasn't Christian. I was not Christian. And that was where I had been going my entire life. I was going to a Christian church. I was going to church. I almost went to Bible school. I just, I was going to church. And I wasn't believing crap that they were saying. I wasn't believing anything they were saying. I believed Jesus was a person. I believed he may have had strange visions. I just don't think... Yeah. Uh, so, let's not get into Christianity right now. So I just, I wasn't Christian. I knew it, and I was still going to church, because there was nowhere else to go. I was bored. I was a loner in school, and church had friends. 
So when I turned 15, I decided to come out to my friend. Um, we went to the mall, and I told her, hey, I think I'm a witch, and I think I'm Wiccan. And she was very accepting of it. She was okay with it. She was happy with for me. All of that. So that went down. That was okay. I haven't talked to her much lately, but she's she's still she's still good. She's nice. Um then um when I turned sixteen, nearing seventeen, I decided I should when I turn seventeen I will tell my family. Because I had already come out to all my friends at that point. So I told my mother first. I told her, hey mom, uh, I need to talk to you. And she just like gave me this look like, what happened? Why are you talking to me? Because, I don't know. We, we always have this close connection. Like we always, we're like roommates more than mother and daughter. We laugh, we joke, we can't go to Denny's without causing a scene. So, we're more like sisters or roommates rather than mother and daughter. It's a good, good relationship. But I'm sitting down and I'm like, hey mom, I want to talk to you for a minute. She's like, sure, what's that? So, I said, what, what would you, I sort of brought it up casually, like, so what would you do if um someone was Wiccan? And she gave me this look like, well, it's their choice. I think it's it's their choice. I don't mind. It's a good choice. She didn't know what Wicca was. Like she asked me a few questions after I came out, and I said, Hey, um, uh, mom, I'm Wiccan, and I am a witch. So. I came out and she was okay with it, so she she asked me a few questions. I answered the best that I could at that time, and then I asked her if we could go to Goodwill or Savers to get altar supplies and everything for, you know, an altar. And she said, sure, in two weeks when I have my paycheck, and so I was okay with that. That worked. I was happy. And then... Two weeks later, it was sort of a split-second decision, like, when you're about to get food from the fridge, but you just don't know if you really want it, but you do it anyway. So, I call up my dad on Monday, just out of the blue, hey, daddy, um, and he grew up in a Jehovah's Witness and Catholic environment. So, but he was very, very accepting. I think he took it better than my mom did. So, I called him up. I'm saying, hi, Dad. I have something I want to tell you. He's like, sure, what's up? And I said, um, I'm going to be starting my year in a day of study for Wicca. And I just wanted to let you know because I decided that it should be, that I should go into this having my entire family and everyone around me know what I'm going to be going into so they can get out of it if they want. And so he said, he asked me a few questions about it. Again, I answered as best as that I could. And then he said, I'm very happy for you. I'm glad you're going with what you feel is right. And I'm very proud of you. And I said, thank you, daddy. Because that's, that was very cool. My dad actually took it better than my mom. So. Because my mom, she she was making little witchy jokes, like, for a few weeks. Just <laughs> pissed me off. So, I did that. I came out to my dad. A few months later, <laughs> my grandma came to town. And that was scary. She's a Jehovah's Witness. So, we, uh, we had a good long three hour chat about paganism and Wicca and witchcraft. Oh my gosh. I didn't exactly tell her I'm Wiccan yet, but I told her I'm looking into paganism and I'm leaning more towards Wicca. 
And so that went that went down magnificently. So that happened. But she's still she's still she's still okay. She just made it out to be like a phase or something, or that I would find the right direction later on in life. And I'm just like, okay, I'll I'll let you have that. So that happened. That was fun. Three hours. My cousin was there too, and he's just sitting there asking more questions, making it go longer and longer. Oh, it was fun. Ooh, he he questions religion, and it's amazing. I love those conversations with him because it's really fun to have those conversations with him. Chia seeds. These are amazing. I love chia seeds. Ooh, chia. Ch -ch -ch chia. So that happened, and that's my coming out story, really. Coming out of the room closet. I have really, oh, 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 and then I made it official on Facebook after she went back to New Jersey. I'm like, ha, wicked. <laughs> ah, political views, peace, nature, love, religion, wicca. That was fun. And then I liked all of these wicked pages on Facebook. Oh, I'm sure my grandmother was having a blast with that. But. That's my coming out of the broom closet story. Um, I'm still learning. I am will always be learning more and more. That's one good thing, because you never want to stop learning. That's one good thing that um, Wicca took from Buddha, Buddhism. They um, took that it's always good to learn, that you should keep on learning as much as you can. So I like that a lot. And I also like the fact that you don't judge and you don't persecute. You can ask questions, you can do all of this stuff, you can keep on furthering your knowledge in it, you can ask more questions, you just can't, don't say that something's wrong. Don't. Because it's, how do you know if it's wrong? Can you prove that something's wrong? No, you can't. Now, unless we're talking about math and there's a formula a formula already and there's answers and everything, then that's wrong. But you can't persecute someone on their views of the afterlife, of their views on what you should and shouldn't do. How do you know if it's wrong? We go by instinct. We were born with a survival instinct. I don't think that's wrong. So, yeah, I was really happy with coming out of the room closet and just letting people know who I was. Something I really like is that when I'm at school, people know that I'm Wiccan. And they'll come to me and they'll ask me stuff. And if I have my tarot cards out, they'll ask for readings and everything. And one good thing about last session in my language arts class, um, we had to do something about our religion or our culture or our background. So I did Wicca. I read the Wiccan read to everyone in class and I answered questions. I had like this whole little lesson just for the class on Wicca and I brought dandelion punch in. And I explained that it was for Beltane and everything. Oh, it was amazing. It was beautiful. <sighs> amazing. Everybody in class loved the dandelion juice, like, a lot. So I recommend that you go ahead and just type in dandelion juice. You find the recipe. It should be the first one. It's on um, Witch's Kitchen, I think. That's the website. It, it It's amazing. Ooh, it's amazing. <laughs> Kitchen Witch. That's the website. Um, and it gives you a ingredients and directions on how to make dandelion punch. It's amazing. I love it. Everybody in class loved it. I gotta make some more. I didn't have, um, I couldn't find dandelion because they've all turned into fuzz because it thinks it's summer already. 
it up here in Arizona, the hottest state ever. Freaking bigot state. Can't believe it. Anyway, so I couldn't find any dandelion, so I had to get dandelion root tea and substitute it. Substitute the dandelion heads for dandelion root tea. Anyway, it worked. Everybody liked it anyway. Like, they really, really liked it. So I did that, and I taught them all as much as I could know about Wicca and witchcraft and all that. I, they had some good questions. You know, the weirdest question I have ever been asked, this, my, somebody from um, last session asked me this. So since you're Wiccan, are you good at Skyrim? I feel like you would be good at Skyrim. And I'm just like, what does my religion have to do with gaming? And I've never played Skyrim. Oh my gosh, some people, some people just don't know what the heck is going on. <sighs> but anyway, that that is my um coming out of the broom closet story. I hope it helps some people. So best my best advice would be to if you're going to start your year in a day of study of Wicca and year in a day that's that's just a title. It's going to take you a lifetime, honestly. Because you never stop learning. You'll always learn more and want to learn more. So, if you're going to start your year and a day of study of Wicca, you can, you should go into it having people know fully well your intentions. Because I think people should have a right if they don't want to be around you, if you're doing something they don't agree with. I think they should have a right to just not be around you. And some people may leave, some people might not, and that's their decision. Just know it's nothing you did, it's their choice, and that it, it happens. People will come in and out of your life all throughout your life. Just think of that as another passing, as someone came into your life, taught you something good, and then had to go and teach somebody else something. So they always have lessons to like, to give you, and it's good that they gave you those lessons, but it's not going to really matter if they leave. Crap happens. People leave, people come, people go. It's fine. It's life. It's the circle of life. So you don't have to mourn the loss of that person. You can just say thank you for being a friend while you could and thank you for teaching me the lessons you did. And if you want to leave, I understand fully that it's your decision and you can go ahead and leave because people in my life, I want positivity. I don't want negativity. So thank you. And if you just have somebody in your group that now knows that you're going to be looking into Wicca and they just keep putting it down and disagreeing with everything you have to say, you can just say that. I'm glad for the lessons you've taught me, but you can go now since, of your, since you're negative about everything I do now. Or you could just walk away. You don't need negativity in your life. It causes stress and stress kills. So, no negativity. That that's my advice for anybody who's coming out to of the closet. And with family, if they really love you, they won't disown you. They'll they'll tell you that they're happy for you. If they're strong Christians and they say that it's witchcraft or devil worshiping, you can go ahead and put the wicked read in front of their face and have them read it to learn and not judge, and then you can either um, you can explain some of the things about it. You can tell them that Christianity turned the personif turned our God into the personification of the devil, because they were trying to get more followers during medieval times. You can go ahead and give them some history lessons. Nobody likes that, but it helps. So that's my advice. If you need any advice or anything on how to tell your family or tell your friends and or anything about this, you can go ahead and message me on Tumblr. 
or you can send me a message on this YouTube channel, I guess. I will definitely answer all of them. That is a promise. I will definitely answer all of them. So I hope you have a lovely day. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Blessed be.